G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, it's a bit of a cold old day in Adelaide, so I'm just pottering in the shed. But what I have done is a bit more work on that uh, cast, on that aluminium that I poured in the two-piece mould. And I've just basically run the fly cutter over these pieces of angle that I cast up, just on the outside, just to dress them a bit. And I can use them now as uh, padding for the for the jaws on the vise. Use them either way around; doesn't really matter. Um, in place of the old steel ones that I've used for like oh shit, 20 years, you know, I'll still keep these. These are good. But the aluminium ones are okay, and I tried it with uh, you know a bit of round stocking to see how they took the pressure and uh, really pulled it up hard. So they're not going to break, break in a hurry. I was worried they might crack, but this Toyota wheel rim aluminium is obviously pretty tough stuff. Put a little bruise in it, but not much. A bit of a bruise there. See, they're going to get marked, so I just didn't muck around when I fly cut them. But anyway, that's pretty good, all free. And then the piece of aluminium that I cast out of a, another two-piece mould is this one. Well, this is going to be for the jaw, one jaw, and that will go on the uh, inside like that, and I've V'd it for round stock, I've got big and smaller, and I've got a row of magnets in the back, which I'm just letting dry, I've just got them uh, aerodited in, so these will have to stand for a few days, let it harden, in the cold weather it'll take quite a while, so yeah, so that jaw will basically drop in that way, and then we just have one alloy jaw on the other one, so bingo, once again, free, do it yourself, you save all this money, it's great, and it is good fun doing it, you know, you get to play around. So what am I going to do today? Well, these fly cutters here, uh, I thought I might just play around with them a bit more. When I fly cut this stuff, I was a bit more careful on this. Uh, did a good job on this, but on this stuff I just whacked it through with the old, because uh, I mean the, the inside's a bit rough, didn't muck around with that. I just used my old single point cutter, which I've had for a while, and uh, I'm going to play around today and just try out a few tips on the uh, two fly cutters and just see how they go. Um, carbide, the round nose high speed steel, uh, pointy nose high speed steel to, so I can get into corners with it. So we'll just, uh, you can just kill a bit of time and see what happens. This is the beauty of cast grain aluminium. You can uh, get round stock, square stock, or any shape you like uh, for free basically. And this is just some of my stockpile that I've got under the bench. So you can see, no problem. You know, if you rushed out and bought that, it'd be out for hundreds of dollars at least, you know. It's, uh, yeah, and it's good exercise learning how to do this. All right, we'll move on. For this exercise, I've just got a block of alloy that I cast years, well, quite a while ago. And uh, you can see it's got shrinkage on the front, so I might as well just use this as an opportunity to uh, square it up. The back side is uh, not too bad. So, uh, yeah, we'll just clean this up and dress it up a bit, get it near, near to working condition, and... Uh, Another little job out the way, so I'll put in a, a cutter and we'll give it a go. Once again, use collets to a proper job. turned out pretty good. You can see that it's given a good surface, nice finish, and that's just using a single point sharp ended cutter. Uh, that's pretty clean. If I put coolant on there, lube, well lube really, um, it would have given a, a better finish again, but I didn't want to smoke myself out in the shed. I've got the shed all shut up. It's a cold day. I don't want the fan on, so I'm just going to do some cutting dry and uh, 
yeah, it, uh, yeah, it might go on a little bit, but overall that's pretty good. So now we'll go on to a, the round nose cutter. It's excellent. And that's done with a round nose cutter with some front relief and back relief. I've always found that they work the best uh, on aluminium. Uh, having a really tight point, it's good for getting into corners, and you need it for getting into corners, but they don't give you the nice finish that you get with a round nose cutter. So now we'll try the carbide. And I don't expect the carbide to be anywhere near as good as this because carbide, by the nature of its design, doesn't really work fantastically well on aluminium from my experience. So we're using a TCMT uh, tip with uh, some positive relief and uh, give that a go. Like butter, but, uh, you see you haven't got that mirror finish. Okay, you can see straight away it's not as good a job as the high speed steel or coming close on that. So here's the results of our labour. And as you can see the, the high speed steel leaves it for dead. Carbide is Nowhere near as good. See that? Okay, so here's the cutter you want to use. High speed steel square section. Got a concave leading leading edge or face, as you can see. So it's just a little concave. Got some back relief. You've got a good wide radius tip on it. So you, the sharper the um, the tip you have, you'll find the poorer the finish generally on aluminium, so, but to get into corners, well it's nice to have a sharp uh, point, but you can always do that on a final pass I suppose. Okay, so that's it, that's the one you want, that's what gave the, the beautiful finish. So here's our aluminium, I mean, that's the finish you get with the high speed steel, and I mean you couldn't ask for more than that, I mean that was done dry too. Uh, if you used lube it would be even better but uh, as I said it's too bloody cold in the shed today to be gassing myself with lube fumes so uh, having it all shut up alright now there are a few other thoughts uh, on this whole process with these cutters another aspect of this that you could try out is instead of using indexable cutters that you would normally use on the lathe milling cutters that you would you normally use on um, end mills uh, I've got a, a pretty good profile and when I get time I'm going to make up a, a holder similar to a TCMT to take one of these 
then put that in the in the fly cutter and see what sort of job that does. Theoretically, it should do a pretty good job because these have a, these have a front relief. Um, they've got a, a curved cutting face. They're really the ideal thing for uh, a facing cutter. So that'll be another project down the track. Try that. And uh, well, that's about it for now. So there you go. High speed steel, the best option. And uh, do that, and you you'll get a fantastic finish all round. Okay, I hope you found it interesting. Just a bit of eye candy. See you next time. Cheers.